And this is Ken Kratzer for Sons of the American Legion Radio with our weekly Army football huddle. And uh, we're going to talk tonight about Army's game last week at the University of Texas, San Antonio. And we're going to talk about their game at Mikey Stadium, a 12 noon start against Mercer University. That's going to be on the CBS Sports Network nationally. And uh, just like to introduce a, a special guest tonight uh, from former Army football player joining us from the Philadelphia area, and that is Steve Shalou. Steve, how are you tonight? Doing fantastic. Great, thank you for joining us. And we have our regulars with us tonight, Colonel Sam Houston, class of 87, U.S. Military Academy, Jack McGurk from Pelham, New York, uh, from our Sons of the American Legion WVOX radio team, and from Florida, our producer, director, Richard Miller. Richard, how are you tonight? I'm doing very well, Ken, how are you? Okay, well, Army had a, a big win down at uh, Texas San Antonio last week at the Alamo Dome, uh, 28 to 16. But they had to play a very uh, young quarterback. Cade Ballard started the freshman from Tennessee. And then Tyree Tyler went in uh, in the next series. And uh, they both played well. And they kind of emerged that uh, as kind of a tandem, uh, Tyree Tyler tended to play on the running downs. And they were putting Cade, Cade Ballard in on uh, – longer, uh, third and long, and uh, some of the passing downs. It's interesting to watch the mix. Why don't we go around the table and uh, let's start uh, with our guest, Steve Shalou. And uh, Steve, what did you think of last week's uh, game uh, against Texas San Antonio for Army? Well, I'll tell you, I was pleasantly surprised because it had all the makings of a trap situation for us. Um, we, we didn't play as well as we'd like to against the Citadel. Um, we're going on the road, and the road has always presented us some challenges. Uh, and then, you know, lastly, having uh, new quarterbacks in there, uh, and just to put into perspective, when you're getting down to third, fourth, fifth, you know, string quarterbacks, there's there's definitely a learning curve. But uh, <clears throat> I think offensively they stepped up the offensive line, which you know I think is the the key to any team, of course, uh, stepped up and. Uh, made it easier for the reads to happen at the point of attack. And and I think that they played well. And the defense has been uh, just steady uh, the entire year. And they they continued on point. Their, their quarterback from UTSA was was a talented guy. And, uh, and I think they did a really good job wrapping that up. So I was really pleasantly surprised. And I think they took a huge step forward. Hey, just to remind our audience, Steve Shalou is a, a member of the West Point class of 1992, played on the Sun Bowl team uh, for Coach Jim Young, also played for Coach Bob Sutton. And uh, uh, Jack McGurk, what was your thought on Army's game uh, this past week? Uh, I was a nice pick up. Nice pick up. Army. Interesting. They've actually now in their two uh, past games, this weekend and the previous game, you had back-to-back -back games of Army quarterbacks making their first career start with uh, Jamel Jones in the previous game and now uh, Ballard in this one. Uh, big game for Anthony Adkins, 101 rushing yards. Uh, big game for, um, actually, for Jeff Munkin. Funny thing uh, for Tahir Tyler, sophomore, uh, big game for him making his debut. And I mentioned Jeff Munkin. Uh, you just talked about Bob Sutton. Actually, this was the 45th win for uh, Jeff Munkin up at Army, which he is now 45th, sorry, he's now uh, fourth all time uh, for coaches with career wins up at Army, passing the guy just named, Bob Sutton. So um, nice win for Coach Munkin uh, and the Black Knights up there at, at uh, Mikey Stadium. Another, I'm sorry, this is a road win. Next game is at Mikey Stadium. But um, yeah, great game for the Black Knights. Yeah, certainly. Uh, Richard, what was your thought on Army's win on Saturday? My thoughts on Army was win Saturday. It was a it was a really good win, improving to five and one. I was really imp I was really even impressed with Tyler Tyler making his Army debut on this who had a critical touchdown and finished with ninety five yards runs and nineteen carries. He really controlled mo most of the offense and controlled most of the most of the clock for Army. Yeah, yeah, that nice 37-yard uh, run uh, uh, off tackle uh, 
and uh, just got to the pylon where he got uh, tackled right at the flag, and uh, they got the call from the replay. So let's uh, see, Sam, tell us about uh, what was your thought about the game? Uh, yeah, I want to concur with all the comments so far. Uh, in my opinion, I thought that was Army's best win of the season so far. Um, not only did they come up against uh, a tough test on the road, UTSA, as we talked about last week, has vastly improved over where they were a year ago. Uh, I definitely want to send a shout out to UTSA starting quarterback. I, I do hope that he's recovering well. It did not look like he, uh, he did not look like he uh, uh, it was doing very well. And let's uh, go to Jack McGurk and hear a little bit about Navy's game last week. All right, Navy came the third win of uh, the season, 27-23 win in Eastern Carolina. Now, with the win, uh, they're actually now 3-0 and in the AAC Conference. They're alone in first place uh, in the AAC, 3-2 uh, and two overall for the season. Nelson Smith had a big game leading uh, Navy with seven yards rush, uh, including two touchdowns, a 20-yard touchdown run in the first quarter and a 29-yard run with 8.51 left in the third. Quarterback Dalen Morris uh, passed for 30 yards on three completions, rushed for a nine-yard touchdown uh, with 3.48 left in the first half. Uh, which is actually the first rushing touchdown of his career. Um, Morris was actually knocked out of the game uh, on a late hit in the third quarter, and Tiger Goslin took over at quarterback, rushing for uh, 27 yards. Uh, fullback Jamali Crothers rushed for 82 yards, had a three-yard touchdown run at the end of the third quarter. Uh, total yards offense, Navy 318, Eastern Carolina 372, so Carolina with the uh, yard advantage there. Um, Though Navy with uh, time of possession 31 29 leading there. Um, and uh, Navy was four for 12 on third downs. Now, on defense, Navy linebacker Diego Fago led the team with 12 tackles and a sack. And as I mentioned, they're 3 0 overall, sorry, 3 and 2 overall, 3 0 in the conference in first place. And this weekend, uh, they are taking on another uh, AAC opponent, one of their big rivals, Houston. And that's going to be at home for the Naval Academy this weekend. So that should be an exciting game. Very good. Thank you, Jack. Now, let's see. We have Sam Houston uh, back uh, online. Sam, can uh, you want to give us uh, an assessment of uh, Army's game last week? And we'll give you first shot at, at, uh, at an update on Navy. I'm going to just do a quick summary this time. Um, it was the best uh, Army win uh, of the season, in my opinion. UTSA vastly improved over last year. They came in with a lot of confidence, having taken BYU to the wire. Uh, Army's one-two punch of Kate, ba Kate Ballard and, and Tyre Tyler really did cause the offense to respond well. Both quarterbacks accounted for two touchdown drives. And uh, as I was saying uh, when I was having technical issues, um, if you look at the stats for the offensive drives, uh, it's interesting because there was a big play in a lot of the drives, which caused time of possession to be down. And so you weren't really seeing a lot of those classic time-consuming Army drives until towards the end of the game uh, when Tyler was at the helm the second, second the last time they had the ball. And they made three consecutive first downs, got to midfield, and then committed their one and only mistake of the whole game really on offense when uh, a very fortunate hit uh, caused uh, Tyler to fumble and uh, UTSA recovered the ball. But the defense proved that they uh, were able to overcome giving up a few yards in this game. Uh, UTSA actually outgained Army in total yardage, but the bend but don't break uh, defense kept them out of the end zone twice in the second half, and that was very impressive. And then one other thing that I did want to make note of, uh, probably for two or three straight weeks, I've been talking about how important it was, in my opinion, for the Army play calling to bring back the counters and the trap plays. And I was so pleased to see counter plays being run by the offense against UTSA to great effect. And so hopefully we're gonna see a lot of those in the future because uh, Army's inside dive to the B-back, yeah, that's a bread and butter play, but by golly, if that's what the defense is expecting on three out of every four plays and you don't have a counter to pull out of your hat to catch them out of position, they're going to stop the B-back play uh, probably 
five out of six times you run it. So kudos uh, to uh, Brent Davis for breaking out the uh, old school triple option plays on this past weekend's game. Very impressive. Looking forward to seeing a lot more of that. Sure. Thank you, Sam. I see Steve Chalou from the class of 92, a former Army football player, offensive lineman. Steve, what you were nodding your head in agreement with Sam's uh, description of the tactics of the Army offense uh, uh, used last week. Yeah, no, that's, uh, it, it was, uh, Sam was spot on. One of the issues <clears throat> that we have had in the past is that we've become very reliant upon the be back. Uh, and, and I think we became one and maybe even two dimensional uh, and almost a double option, not a triple option team. And I think coach just doesn't want to put the ball in the turf. When you get it wide and you get into the pitch game, there's a bigger chance of that happening. And we've had a lot of young quarterbacks in the last two years. So he's trying to, he's, he's hedging his bets. Teams will stack the box in that case. If you watch the Air Force Navy game, that's what they did. And, and Air Force dominated them. So if we, we need to figure something out before we play Air Force because we either have to get that ball outside and open up that defense a little bit or use the angles of the trap game uh, to catch a slanting defense off guard and, and come back from the opposite side, uh, which can be uh, really, uh, really beneficial for us. So I, I have to agree with Sam. That was a really, uh, it's a great adjustment. Uh, I think Brent has been reluctant in doing it because our slot backs are, have been relatively smaller. Uh, and, and they're starting to recruit a little bit bigger, a little hardier slot backs. Um, so I think we might see a little bit more of that inside game uh, as our, you know, our A backs and slot backs are, are a little bit larger. Uh, and, and I like that direction. As an offensive lineman, I, uh, I, I want to put it. I want to put it between the tackles. That's a that's a rite of passage for us. <laughs> What's your thoughts, Steve, on? Uh... Uh, the outstanding freshman Tyree Robinson, uh, slot back for Army number 21, leading the team in rushing so far. Well, I just I just saw recently uh, that he was named uh, on the watch list for for uh, you know a, a rookie or a freshman uh, team watch list, which is which is a lot of uh, really, I mean that says a lot for him. He's he's got next level type fluidness in in moves. Um, I, I love I love what he brings to the table for us. I mean, he's he's definitely. I mean, they've scaled back his usage to something that he can handle because he is a plebe, and and there's a lot to that. But I see him growing over time, um, and he could be something really special for us for sure. Very good. Now, Richard Miller, uh, you want to take us through how the uh, top 25 games went last week? The top 25 last week. Kentucky improved at 2 and 2, beating ten, number 18, Tennessee, 34 to 17. Number 8, Cincinnati, and Tulsa. Cincinnati is 3 and 0 on the season. They were, po they were postponed. Number 13, Miami, 31 19 over Pitt, who is now 3 and 3 on the season. Miami's 4 and 1 on the season. Clemson Tigers, 73 to 7 over, over Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech's 2 and 3 on the season. Clemson is 5 and 0. South Carolina 30 to 22 over number 15 Auburn, who both teams are now two and two on the season. Some also other some other scores on the uh, trying to find trying to find the trying to find other top other top 25 scores. Oh, Louisiana and Coastal Carolina. Coastal Carolina is now five and zero oh on the season, while Louisiana is three and two on the season. A couple of teams really playing well, Richard. Um, you know, one team they were talking about on Mark Packard's show today was uh, uh, Liberty at five and zero on the season. They're a team that Army's going to is on Army's future schedule uh, the next couple of years for a home and home, and they've gotten too off to uh, to a strong start. The other one that stands out is Georgia Tech is really struggling, mm. and uh, uh, with with their season so far. Um, Hey, Sam, anything stand out to you on the top 25 uh, games? I think there's some some big surprises, uh, some teams that were really expected to do well this year. Um, LSU and Auburn, I think, are probably my two biggest surprise teams, um, especially LSU. They're struggling, and 
I'm not really sure if that was due to overconfidence coming in from last season, which I don't suspect, uh, or perhaps that the SEC talent and coaching changes that have happened have made an impact already uh, on the season. So I'm also curious to see how the Big Ten play, which kicks off this week, um, is going to affect the uh, the top 25 and how that's going to shake up the rankings. And, and, you know, most importantly to me and, and in this discussion is Army football, and that is how it's going to toughen the shell for Army to crack back into the top 25. So uh, lots to watch for. Um, Lots of uh, surprises so far, uh, and you mentioned Liberty. Um, they should be in the top 25, in my opinion, at 5-0, and um, and they are vastly improved over where they were just a couple of years ago when Army played them. I think they were brand new in FBS then, so uh, they've really got their program in high gear, and uh, they're going to represent some serious competition for the Army team in, in coming days. Sure. So, absolutely, Steve uh, Shalou. Uh, any games stand out for you? Um, uh, certainly, uh, Clemson's the team to beat this year. Um, any any uh, the other teams stand out to you? I will tell you that a couple of things. Uh, I wonder, if, to your point, Ken, if if um, if Georgia Tech's missing Paul Johnson uh, at all now. I mean, if you're going to play it against the Clemson, you want to have a time control offense. Um, I, I, I didn't necessarily agree with, with his, his he, he leaving, and um, but that, that's a whole other thing. One of the things, Sam, to your point on LSU, they're struggling right now. They moved to a four-man front on defense. Um, their, their, their personnel isn't set for a four-man front, so they're going through a little bit of a growing pains. I think they need to recruit for that, so they're going to have a tough time this year in the SEC on defense, going for a three, an odd man front to an even front. Um, you know, there are some teams. I, what surprises me, Ohio State being in top 20 without playing a game. I mean, I, I think respectfully, let's, let's let them play a game. Let's see how that all plays out. Um, and, and it's good to see some of the other teams that are popping into the top 20 or top 25. Uh, it's adding flavor. It's adding a little bit of uh, notoriety to some schools that, on a normal basis, wouldn't get there. Um, so th th that's been fun, uh, and, and I'd love to see Army get back in there. But we're not going to do it playing playing a Mercer team. Well, let's let's start uh, uh, our discussion of Saturday's game at Mikey Stadium. Mercer was one of the schools that raised their hand and said, "Yes, they'd like to come up to New York and play at West Point uh, when Army needed to uh, find teams to play." And Army called. Uh, from what we understand, every possible school in the country that they that could possibly uh, have an open day to come and play at West Point and Mercer, to their credit, said yes, they'd like to come up and play. They've got a a new coach, an outstanding record in Division Two, and uh, they've got some players. They've got a kick returner, ran a touchdown back, 100 yards. They've got a running back who's run for 2,000 yards. Uh, they've got an experienced quarterback. They've got a young linebacker that uh, uh, there was some attention uh, paid to in, in, the, uh, in the press. Uh, Sam, why don't we start with your comment? What's your thought about playing Mercer on Saturday? My, my first thought about Mercer is uh, I actually know where Mercer is, and um, I was familiar with Mercer already, and my dad was asking me last night, surprisingly, you know, where Mercer is, and, and I knew because when I was a platoon leader many moons ago, I was the second platoon leader and the third platoon leader uh, was a Mercer graduate and played uh, baseball for Mercer. So he used to tell me all about Mercer. So uh, I, was, I thought of Bruce the second I saw Mercer pop up on Army's calendar. Um, now, as that being said, I was not familiar really at all with Mercer as a team. So last night I did something else that I have been meaning to do, but I never had a chance to. And I dialed into Crawdad's countdown last night on 97.7 The Score here in Huntsville. And, uh, you know, that's a group of uh, uh, members of the West Point Society, and they've got their own little time slot on ESPN. And uh, they even mentioned your name, Ken, and, and sent kudos your way. And they talked a little bit about Mercer, 
and uh, talked a little bit about Mercer's offense. Apparently, they like to throw the long ball. Uh, I guess they run some type of variation of the flex bone offense, and uh, they have had success running the ball. They haven't necessarily had a very good season to this date. They haven't played much. Um, but they have had time, number one, to prepare for Army, much like Citadel did. And uh, they do have familiarity with Army's offense because I don't know the name, but apparently uh, one of their assistant coaches uh, was on Monk and staff at one time, and he's now with Mercer. And so it brings a familiarity with Army and their play calling and the preparation that needs to take place. All that being said, I watched one of their practice reports from earlier this uh, week, and uh, I didn't glean much from that at all uh, other than I saw their players practicing and the size, the talent. It didn't look like it lined that up that well with uh, what Monken has put together on the Army sideline. And uh, I was amused when the uh, person who was uh, narrating the uh, practice report mispronounced Mikey Stadium and called it Mitchie Stadium. And so that being said, I think that this weekend's game on paper is it's seriously an, an overmatch in favor of Army. Um, but we cannot discount the amount of prep time that Mercer has had and the familiarity they do have to prepare for the Army team. And uh, based on historical perspective of what happened against the Citadel a couple of weeks ago, we can't look at this game thinking about Air Force. And uh, because if we do, we find ourselves in a tight situation where, you know, a couple of missed field goals or field goal block uh, comes down to being the difference. Uh, between a win and a loss, uh, we'd rather win going away and let a bunch of people on the sideline get a chance to get some reps. So that's my initial thoughts about the Mercer game. Okay. Let's go to Jack McGurk. What's your quick thought about uh, Army's game this week? Uh, well, I agree with Sam. I think Army's going to be the overwhelming favorite in the game. Um, as you mentioned, these are two teams that, I don't know if they've ever, they've ever faced each other before, but they, because of uh, the uh, COVID pandemic, uh, kind of screwed up their schedule, so they were looking for opponents, and uh, now they're going to be facing other, each other at Mikey Stadium. And I mentioned a stat last week um, that Army um, at Mikey Stadium since 2017, their record is 20 and two, so huge home field advantage up at West Point. So uh, yeah, I think Army's definitely the favorite uh, in this game. Okay, and let's go to our guest tonight, Steve Shalou. Uh, Steve, I think. What I'm going to be looking for, I'm going to be covering warm-ups at, uh, you know, 10:45, 11 o'clock on Saturday morning. Is who warms up at quarterback? Um, Cade Ballard uh, is listed as the uh, at the top of the quarterback roster in the game notes that uh, that Army released, and uh, uh, Tyree Tyler uh, is there. Also, uh, Maurice uh, Ballon, uh, who we saw uh, play in. Uh, in uh, the Abilene Christian game, uh, tell us what's your thought about balancing this 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 quarterback uh, uh, situation that Army's got using basically numbers three, four, and five from what we might have thought at the beginning of the year. Uh, <clears throat> well, I, I as an Army fan, you can never have enough proficient quarterbacks. I mean, we. We run them hard. They they attack the line of scrimmage, and, and they have the the propensity of getting dinged up. And we just need to have the ability of going to multiple quarterbacks. I was impressed with the two quarterbacks from the last game. Cade reminds me of a Mike Kovic from our era, just a kind of a thick, uh, got an attitude, uh, wants to stick his nose in there. He can throw the ball a little bit. Um, here's a little prediction for you. I may be wrong, and I haven't talked to anybody. I think we come out in multiple sets this week. I think we come out in the shotgun a little bit. I I, I would not be surprised. Really? Would not be surprised if we come out a little bit of shotgun. Maybe mm -hmm. instead of having the two to the two wings, we we go to trips to one side to give Air Force another look that they have to prepare for. This is the perfect game to get some of that stuff in, play some situational football. I wouldn't put it put it past us to get, and that may be why Cade is starting because he's got a, he's got a much better arm. 
I'm throwing it out there. You can laugh at me. You know, who knows? But I think maybe we're going to see a little bit of a of a switch up in, in an offense, not full time, but there will be some looks. Yeah, I just want to remind our audience uh, that uh, going into the season, we expected Jabari Laws to be the number one quarterback who played so well uh, last year when Kel Hopkins was hurt. And then then but he, he had serious uh, 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 surgery over the winter and was not ready yet to play. And Christian Anderson uh, was hurt two games ago. Um, and uh, he is not listed on the roster or the depth chart. And then uh, Jamel Jones, who played uh, well um, in the game against the Citadel. Uh, last play of the game after he threw would turn out to be an interception on a screen pass. In making, trying to make the tackle, he turned his ankle from what we could see on television. And he's not listed today uh, on, the, uh, on the depth chart. Uh, but they played a number four quarterback. So, uh, uh, Jeff Munkin keeps his options open. Steve, but I think one of the keys, and we saw it on sa- this past Saturday in the San Antonio game, is how the offensive line, in particular the centers, uh, worked with young quarterbacks. They had no uh, exchange uh, drops that we saw. Uh, it seemed pretty smooth, and it seemed like the whole offensive line picked up their game to uh, get the running game going to support the two quarterbacks. What was your thought on, on how the offensive line responded? Yeah, the the offensive line. <clears throat> excuse me, I'm a, I'm a little biased when it comes to the offensive line. I I think it's obviously the way that the offensive line goes, so goes the team. You can control the line of scrimmage. You can control the time of possession. You can control uh, and and present your own will upon your opponent uh, and do what you need to do. When we played, we played, we ran the no huddle offense. By the second series. The defense knew which way we're going, left or right. We didn't care. We just needed to execute. It didn't matter to us. And if we executed better than them, we won the ball game. Um, Connor Bishop uh, is going to be one of the good ones. And as you see him mature, uh, he'll get into the Bryce Holland type. You know, Bryce was a special talent. But he has the ability. He's already been named to the Remington watch list. I text I text uh, uh, Connor on a weekly basis, kind of motivationally, they assign a kind of a mentorship at the beginning of the year for a player, and he and I have been corresponding. Um, I give him little tidbits of uh, motivation and other stuff. He, he'll be, uh, he'll get them ready. I, the offensive line has not played a complete game as of yet. They need to get to that point in time in our season where we can do that, so that we can play teams like Air Force and Navy. Because Navy, no matter what their record is, they're going to come ready to play us. They're going to come. Uh, you know, it, it's going to be a, a dogfight. So. We've got to start putting together a full and complete game across the line uh, and then watch how that affects the rest of the team. They haven't done it yet. Uh, they've had issues with chop blocks. We've had issues with uh, at the point of attack, uh, uh, not not uh, denting the defense, which gives the quarterback mesh time to be able to read where he's going to go with it. Uh, if they start putting that together, we can have a special season like we did a few years back when Brett Toth was there and that, that offensive line was truly special. Um, they can get there, but they're not there yet. But uh, I think they're taking strides to get, get, get there. And you mentioned Brett Toth. Uh, he and Elijah Riley both on the active roster for the Philadelphia Eagles. And uh, uh, they have the Thursday night game this week. So we look to see how they do. How they do. Let's go to Richard Miller. Uh, Richard, what are the uh, games coming up in the top 25 that, you, that you're, uh, you're checking on? The games in the top five that I'm taking up games in the top five that I'm checking on this weekend are uh, number two Alabama and Tennessee. Alabama is four and zero on the season. Number three Notre Dame, a three thirty game against Pitt. Notre Dame is four and zero on the season. Also, uh, get uh, the oh, a huge a huge one at night. Number eighteen Michigan starting their season against number 21, Minnesota. Both teams have no record. A Saturday night primetime game. That'll be a big one, and uh, as the Big Ten gets uh, started. Now, Jack you, Jack McGurk, you've been uh, uh, checking on uh, on Navy and Air Force. I know Air Force, you mentioned uh, uh, San Jose State, uh, uh, their second game of the year. T- and uh, tell us about that and uh, what Navy's got in store this week. Well, Air Force... Uh- a game of the season for them against San Jose State. It's actually the season opener for San Jose State. 
Um, and that game is uh, a road uh, game for Air Force, first road game of the season. And if you look at their history, uh, Air Force, uh, they had five games against each other. Air Force is four and one against uh, San Jose State. So uh, I think Air Force probably has the advantage uh, in this game. Uh, Navy, on the other hand, they're playing uh, one of their big opponents in the AAC conference, Houston. And Houston, earlier this season, actually, uh, this is their third game of the season. And first road game, actually, their first two games are against opponents that Navy actually played this year. Um, one of them, another AAC school, which is Tulane. Navy, of course, had that um, unbelievable comeback win, 27-24 uh, over Tulane uh, earlier in the season. Houston actually opened the season um, at home with a 49-31 win over Tulane and then uh, lost to uh, BYU 43-26. Uh, Navy, of course, opened the season getting blown out by BYU. BYU having a great year. They're, I believe, 5-0. and um, So uh, it's cool to keep an eye on there. Uh, but um, with the Navy-Houston rivalry in 2018, Houston uh, beat them 49-36. to Last year, Navy came up with a win 56-41. So I think we're going to see another high-scoring game uh, on Saturday uh, between these two rivals. So we'll see who uh, comes out on top in, that, in this one. Okay, and let's go to, uh, let's go to Sam Houston. What's your thought about Navy and uh, Air Force's games this week? Well, I, I personally still don't think Navy is that good, um, just from me watching them, uh, but I might be a little biased. I think Houston's going to come in with a little chip on their shoulder. I think they have more team speed, and I think they have more talent, and they have a, uh, they have a score to settle because last year against Navy, there was the Malcolm Perry factor, and uh, the Malcolm Perry factor was really the difference in the game because I remember watching that. It was a scoring fest until Houston's defense just basically couldn't keep up with Malcolm Perry. Um, so we'll see. Uh, I, I am impressed that Navy has improved their record to three and two, uh, especially after the way they were completely blown out by BYU. Uh, they look pitiful against Air Force, which was uh, almost unbelievable for an academy rivalry game to have that poor of a showing. So uh, it remains to be seen, but uh, I'm, I'm going to just go with Houston on my gut feeling of coming out with the win on Saturday. And then uh, I wanted to go back and give kudos to Steve for his comment about uh, two things. One, the shotgun comment, and two, about Connor Bishop. Um, you know, from from this uh, from this 150s alum to the Fat Boy alum, I, I would I would never laugh at a at a Fat Boy alum for for speaking truth like that. Uh, let's just say that uh, the shotgun formation and triple option exists in Brent Davis's inventory. Kelvin Hopkins used it a lot, and it was unveiled, uh, I believe, against Navy uh, a couple of years ago. It was uh, you showed up at the game and Army had not even run out of the shotgun on triple option at all. And they unveiled it against Navy. And that first drive in 2018 went straight down the field because Navy had not adjusted to that new look. So I would not be surprised to see that look uh, happen this weekend. And I, I would love to see that. I would love to see some of the new running backs run that. And then where Connor Bishop is concerned. Yeah, this young kid he potentially could be one of the greats. And the best part about Connor Bishop is the fact that he's the center. And the anchor of every offensive line is the play from the center. Starting from the, from the uh, center quarterback exchange to the way the center leads the, the, the blow off the line of, the scr of scrimmage. And uh, for being, you know, basically just being the anchor at the center of the line that is making things happen. And the center play last year was very suspect for Army, and it was a big reason why the Army offense sputtered the way it did. So, uh, you know, I can't wait to see uh, some of this young talent on Army's team mature uh, for the level they're playing at right now and what they can be so long as we don't see any unforeseen injuries. So, um, but thanks again for saying that, Steve, because those were very good comments. Steve, any, uh, any thoughts about... Uh... Navy and Air Force, uh, there's, uh, there are games coming up this week. Um, well, you know, I, 
I think Navy beats uh, Houston just because of the quality of coaching uh, between the two. Ken, uh, uh, Ken, Coach Ken from uh, from Navy is a much better coach than Houston's coach. I, I, I'm not a fan of, of Houston's coach at all. I think they'll be they'll start finding their stride. Uh, they didn't do a lot of hitting in training camp. This is about time. This is about the time of hitting equation of, of starting the season. I think they they start putting it together. Upset alert! I think they beat Houston. Air Force. I don't know if it's if it if this will be a uh, a step down from what they did against Navy. They got to go on the road. Um, I, they're going to be an interesting team. They've got a you know they've got a very talented running back. Uh, you know number twenty four is. Uh, you know, I I still have nightmares about him while I'm watching while I sleep. And and they seem to recruit very thick, very tall quarterbacks um, that are athletic. And that holds again uh, this year. So I think they'll be uh, I think they'll be re really good. To, Sam, to your comment in terms of of the center play, the option offense is predicated by. It's up the middle. It's not unlike baseball where you have, you know, the catcher and the pitcher and the center fielder, center, quarterback, fullback. If you are complete at those three positions, you will have a heck of an offense. We're like two and a half. We're 2.5 right now. We will find our stride with our quarterback once once that gets where it needs to be. But we're, all, I mean, fullback, it's just a machine. Center last year, we had a problem. It, he was he was over, he was almost 6'6". Six, six. You can't run a wishbone offense with a center that's six foot six. You can't get to bad level and get leverage at the point of attack. If you get a, a stout nose guard who can stand you up, you're going to stop it at the point of attack. We saw that a lot last year. Connor's a little bit smaller, more compact, very athletic. He gets it done. Very good. Now let's uh, just uh, wrap up today. Let's go around and give a prediction on the score. Um, uh, Jack McGurk, what do you think? Uh, Army hosting Mercer, what do you think the score is going to be? Uh, I think it could be um, a blowout. I'm going to say 48-14 uh, Army. Uh, I think we'll have a nice win there. Um, also, quick congratulations to, Tarmy, to uh, Army alum Tony Coaxum, just hired as the uh, head coach at uh, Bluefield State College in West Virginia. Yeah, good uh, good uh, reminder on that, uh, Tony Coaxum. Uh, has a has a Super Bowl championship ring when he was an assistant coach with the Denver Broncos, and uh, very happy that he got that head coach appointment. That's a school down in Southern West Virginia, and uh, and uh, we're looking forward. In fact, we'll uh, be talking to Tony in the next uh, week or or so and hearing all about it. Richard Miller, what's your thought on Army hosting Mercer? What do you think the score is going to be? Forty-eight fourteen Army. Okay, I think uh, very close to Jack. And uh, Steve, before I ask you that, um, and we want to thank you for joining us today. Tell us, I have this question about uh, teams. Some teams like Army now uh, have played six games, are going to play their seventh game. Other schools are just starting their, their season, have played a couple of games. Is, it, is there an advantage to have played six or seven games, or is it an advantage to have just played a couple of games and have fresh legs? Uh, and fewer injuries. What, what do you think on that perspective that's going to be, we're going to see in college football this year? Well, they, they often say that you make your biggest improvement from your first to the second game. So once you get past your second game, you really have the identity of your team. A few exceptions happened. Our, our team last year was an exception. We, we, we kind of, we got dinged up after Michigan. Um, I, I always feel that you know, experience. We're still Army's a young team, still relatively young. I, I think getting reps and snaps under your belt, as long as you can stay healthy, is is it provides you with a heck of a lot of advantage for that. I, I, I'll take, I'll take, um, I'll take the experience with a caveat of staying relatively healthy. Uh, I like, I like with, I like a week off going into Air Force, having, having that many games under our belt. Um, I like that a lot. Yeah, it's it's going to be interesting, an opportune time. Air Force is now going to play uh, consecutive weeks before coming to West Point. And uh, they've got San Jose State, as we said, this week. And then they've got a tough game against Boise State next week uh, before Army. So they're going to be, uh, be uh, have to be playing uh, at their full uh, regiment. Sam Houston, what's your uh, thought?
thought on this week and uh, and a score for us? Yeah, first I, I just wanted to say I'm sorry I didn't I didn't uh, say anything about the Air Force game. I'll, I'll just uh, very quickly before my Army Mercer prediction. Um, uh, I believe San Jose State was a vastly improved team last year over the year before when Army crushed them like 59 to three, and they rolled into Mikey Stadium and handed the L to uh, the Army team at Mikey. Mm. And uh, they, I think they were just one win away from a winning season. I'd have to go back and look at their final record. But uh, so it remains to be seen how much their improvement continues this year. And we'll find out uh, when they play Air Force uh, this weekend. So um, I do believe Air Force is going to have a tougher game than what a lot of people would just assume. And uh, I think it's going to be a close game. Uh, I think Air Force is probably going to pull out the W, uh, but it's not going to be by more than two or three points. Um, now, where Army and Mercer are concerned, there's just too much of a talent gap and the, the ghosts of the Citadel still hangs uh, in the minds of the Army team. They're not going to let that happen again. Um, and to stay true to the prediction I made on the uh, All Academy Wars forum, um, I'm going to say Army 59, Mercer 7. Uh, a lot of the scoring is going to happen in the second half as they pull away pretty dramatically. Yeah, yeah. I was talking, we had Ben uh, Holden from CBS Sports on our WVOX show on Monday, and I think he's, uh, he's, he's, he's uh, feeling a little bit challenged on this game because he feels like it could be a big score. Steve Shalou, a final thought, a, a prediction on the game? 49-6. Mercer might get two field goals, but we won't let him in the end zone. Okay, okay. I'm going to go for 55-10. to 10. Uh, I think Army's going to uh, have a big offensive day, and, uh, and uh, we'll look forward to that. Uh, I just really want to thank our team for joining us again. Uh, Jack McGurk calling in from Pelham, New York. Richard, Richard Miller. Our producer director calling in from Florida, Sam Houston from Huntsville, Alabama. Sam, a graduate of the United States Military Academy, class of 87. Our special guest today, Steve Shalou, calling in from the Philadelphia area from the class of 1992. Great to have you with us today, Steve. We hope you come back. Thank you, Ken. Our pleasure. Okay, so we will be at Mikey Stadium. We'll have our pregame. Facebook live coverage of warm-up starting at about 1045. I, I want to get started early this week because I want to see who's, who's ready to play at on the on the uh, practice on the on the field warming up and we'll be live through uh, the national anthem and the entrance of the army team. Then you can watch the game on the CBS Sports Network starting at 12 noon. It's an early start this week, 12 noon, back to uh, what's been the uh, schedule of Army home games the last couple of years. So thanks to our team. And I uh, want to just thank uh, those who we represent, the 2 million veterans of the American Legion and the 350,000 members of the Sons of the American Legion serving America's veterans. So we'll see you on Saturday. You have a good night uh, from everybody at Sons of the American Legion Radio. <laughs>